In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is in our midst. Yes. Having completed the holy 40 days of Great Lent, we come together this weekend to celebrate two events in the life of the Lord, preparing us to enter into Holy Week as of tonight. Tonight we begin Holy Week. These two events are the raising of Lazarus, the friend of Christ, after he had been dead for four days, and the entrance of the Lord to Jerusalem. And this is the name of the feast today. We call it Palm Sunday, or Pussy Willow Sunday in the Slavic tradition because they, well, for a long time, they didn't have access to a lot of palms. We'll talk about palms or about branches in a, a little later. But the proper name of the feast is the entry of the Lord to Jerusalem. The Lord enters Jerusalem where he is met with a large crowd there was often a crowd around the Lord, but this was different. It was a larger crowd, and not just because the Passover was coming up. And you know, around the time for the feast, a lot of people would come to Jerusalem. But... St. John the Evangelist tells us that the reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard that he had done this thing, and this thing is calling Lazarus out of the tomb and raising him from the dead. There was a crowd around the Lord at the raising of Lazarus in the town of Bethany just a few days before. <clears throat> they weren't there to witness a miracle, they were there to mourn. But then they witnessed something they could not have imagined. They saw Jesus weeping for his friend and for humanity, and then they saw him make his way to the tomb and calling him forth. This is the God-man, Jesus as one of the fathers of the church puts it, as man he weeps for his friend, and as God he calls him back to life. <clears throat> so today the Lord enters to Jerusalem and the crowd greets him with shouts of Osana, which means God save us now. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. The Lord is proclaimed as King, as Messiah, and as Redeemer. When St. Matthew records this, he specifically highlights the children in the crowd who were also shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Where do we think they learned that chant from? of course, from their parents, who just like you are raising their children in the faith. St. Matthew also records that the scribes and Pharisees were upset and asked Jesus, do you hear what they are saying? In other words, how could you possibly accept praise from men? And that's an important point. The Lord did not reject the praise. Just parenthetically here, when people try to say that Jesus never claimed to be God, you can point this out. Of course, this is not the only place, but when you start noticing these little things, you'll see that every verse in the scriptures bears witness to the divinity of Christ. Back to our points, when the scribes and Pharisees tried to rebuke him, 
the Lord did not reject the praise, but in fact, he made the connection for them with the prophetic psalm, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast brought perfect praise. Now what does this mean to us today? Yesterday, we were with the Lord in Bethany to witness the raising of Lazarus, to behold Christ's power over death. Today, we enter with the Lord to Jerusalem and we will stay in Jerusalem for all of Holy Week as we accompany Christ through his suffering leading to his resurrection. We do not enter Jerusalem as observers or spectators. We enter as participants who seek to be transformed. And what does this mean? How can we be transformed? His Eminence Metropolitan Saba tries to sum this up with the following words. We seek to participate fully in these events, growing in piety and spiritual struggle. We reflect on the fig tree that withered at his command, the repentance of the adulteress juxtaposed with Judas's betrayal, and the parable of the ten virgins that warns us against negligence and sloth. We will heed the Lord's stern rebukes of the Pharisees and those like them who outwardly observe the commandments and teachings of the divine law, but do not let them touch their hearts and change their souls. We will contemplate Peter's denial, contrasting it with Judas's despair and subsequent suicide. We will also contemplate the mystical supper and the profound mystery of the Eucharist, as well as the humbling act of foot washing, the Lord's teaching on servanthood, and his words about the first among us, and the manner of how we become first in our servanthood. Following this, we will recount the journey of Christ's passion, culminating in his crucifixion, burial, and the sealing of the tomb. And on Holy Saturday, we will await in reverent silence his glorious resurrection. In Christ, he continues, in Christ we find hope that our suffering leads to resurrection and new life. Holy Week is an intense journey. It is the greatest week to be alive. It's not uncommon to see the church packed at some of the more sentimental services. But I encourage you to take advantage of the prayers celebrated every day. And that's not because we like to see the church full. We do, but that's not the reason why I'm encouraging you. But in order to allow the salvific events to shape your life as a believer. And so His Eminence continues. The prayers, hymns, and scriptures of this week call us to reflect deeply on our own lives and actions. And so we see in ourselves the fig tree that must always bear fruit. The sinner who repents fervently, Judas who falls into betrayal and despair of God's mercy, Peter who denies out of fear but repents with bitter tears, the woman who washes the Lord's feet, and the disciple who, present, who is presented the body and blood of his Lord as food and drink to be united and with him spiritually in order to become the beloved for whom Christ dies to give him the power of life that triumphs over death. This is a journey set before us this week. And we have already started today when we came together with branches in our hands. 
We hold the branches in, imita in imitation of the children who came to welcome the Lord entering into Jerusalem. The branch is not a liturgical prop. And it definitely shouldn't be a distraction. I'm looking at the altar boys. It shouldn't be a distraction. The branch is a blessing that we treat with great reverence. We bless these branches at Matins and we distribute them to everyone in the church so that when the Lord enters in the liturgy, you already have them in hand. The branch in our hand is our way of welcoming the Lord, the King, the Messiah, and the Redeemer. The God-man who raised Lazarus from the dead. The one who has power to trample death. We hold these palms in our hands to say that we are going up to Jerusalem to accompany Christ and participate in his life-giving passion, death, and resurrection. We are not going up to the earthly Jerusalem, but as the, as the hymn says, to the Jerusalem on high, the heavenly Jerusalem. We go, we go up with purified minds and hearts to die with him, to put the passions to death, that we may live with him here and in the kingdom of heaven. And it all begins here and now as we cry, Hosanna, God save us now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen.